Good day everyone. Today I'm going to discuss about cybercrime and preventive measures. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so let's define cybercrime first. In simple words, cybercrime also called computer crime. The use of a computer as an instrument to further illegal ends such as committing fraud, trafficking in child pornography and intellectual property, stealing identities or violating privacy. Cybercrime is a crime in which a computer is used for a crime like hacking, spamming, phishing, and etc. Okay, so before we proceed to the introduction, I just want to state 5 facts about cybercrime that you need to know. Okay, so first, there is a hacker attack every 39 seconds. A Clark School study at the University of Maryland is one of the first to quantify the near constant rate of hacker attacks of computers with internet access. Every 39 seconds on average, affecting 1 in 3 Americans every year, and the non-secure usernames and passwords we use that give attackers more chance of success. So next, 43% of cyber attacks target small businesses. 64% of companies have experienced web-based attacks. 62% experience phishing and social engineering attacks. 59% of companies experience malicious code and botnets, and 51% denial of service attacks. Since COVID-19, the US FBI reported a 300 increase in reported cybercrimes. As if pandemic wasn't scary enough, hackers leveraged the opportunity to attack vulnerable networks as office work moved to personal homes. Approximately $6 trillion is expected to be spent on cybersecurity by 2021. Organizations need to make a fundamental change in their approach to cybersecurity and reprioritize budgets to align with this newly defined reality of our modern society. And lastly, there are cyber criminals on the FBI's most wanted list. Cybercrime is in no way a joke. As of May 2016, there were 19 cyber criminals listed on the FBI's most wanted list. The cyber criminals on this list were responsible for huge consumer losses, some up to $100 million. Cybercrime is on the rise and it is important that you realize the danger it poses to your personal data. So for introduction, Cyber criminals use the internet and computer technology to hack users' personal computers, smartphone data, personal details from social media, business secrets, national secrets, and etc. Criminals who perform these illegal activities through the internet are called hackers. One of the best ways to stop these criminals and protect sensitive information is by making use of inscrutable security that uses a unified system of software and hardware to authenticate any information that is accessed over the internet such as firewall. Ok so let's jump to the causes of cybercrime. Easy access. The problem behind safeguarding a computer system from unauthorized access is that there are many possibilities of breach due to the complex technology. Hackers can steal access codes, retina images, advanced voice recorders, etc. That can fool biometric systems easily and bypass firewalls can be utilized to get past many security systems. Capacity to store data in comparatively small place. The computer has the unique characteristic of storing data in a very small space. This makes it a lot easier for the people to steal data from any other storage and use it for their own profit. Complex The computers run on operating systems and these operating systems are programmed of millions of codes. The human mind is imperfect, so they can do mistakes at any stage. These cybercriminals take advantage of these gaps. Next is negligence which also means failure to take proper care in doing something. It's one of the characteristics of human conduct. So, there may be a possibility that protecting the computer system we may make any negligence which provides cyber criminal access and control over the computer system. Loss of evidence. 
The data related to the crime can be easily destroyed. So, loss of evidence has become a very common and obvious problem, which paralyzes the system behind the investigation of cybercrime. These are the different types of cybercrime. Hacking is a simple term that defines sending illegal instruction to any other computer or network. In this case, a person's computer is hacked so that his personal or sensitive information can be accessed. The criminal uses a variety of software to crack a person's computer and the person may not be aware that his computer has been accessed from a remote location. Often, government websites are a hot target for hackers because it helps them gain notoriety which is further fueled by aggressive media coverage. This is different from ethical hacking which is used by many organizations to check the internet security protection. Child Pornography and Abuse The internet is being highly used to abuse children sexually worldwide. This is also a type of cybercrime wherein criminals solicit minors via chat rooms for the purpose of child pornography. The cybersecurity department of every nation is spending a lot of time monitoring chat rooms frequented by children with the hopes of reducing and preventing child abuse and soliciting. Piracy or theft This crime occurs when a person violates copyrights and downloads music, movies, games, and software. There are even peer-sharing websites that encourage software piracy and many of these websites are now being targeted by the FBI. Today, the judicial system is addressing this cybercrime and there are laws that prevent people from illegal downloading. Film producers and directors often become victims of this crime. Cyberstalking This is a kind of online harassment wherein the victim is subjected to a barrage of online messages and emails. Typically, these stalkers know their victims and instead of resorting to offline stalking, they use the internet to stalk. However, if they notice that cyberstalking is not having that desired effect, they begin offline stalking along with cyberstalking to make the victim's lives more miserable. Cyberterrorism Cyberterrorism, also known as information wars, can be defined as an act of internet terrorism that includes deliberate and large-scale attacks and disruption of computer networks using computer viruses or physical attacks using malware to attack individuals, governments, and even organizations. The goal of terrorism is to create a feeling of terror in the minds of the victims. Keeping this concept in mind, it becomes easier to differentiate cyber attacks for a financial or egotistical gain from acts of cyber terrorism. Cyber terrorists operate with the goal of damage and destruction at the forefront of their activities. Identity theft This has become a major problem with people using the internet for cash transactions and banking services. In this cybercrime, a criminal accesses the data about a person's bank account, credit cards, social security, debit card and other sensitive information to siphon money or to buy things online in the victim's name. It can result in major financial losses for the victim and even spoil the victim's credit card history. Computer Vandalism Computer vandalism is a type of malicious behavior that involves damaging computers and data in various ways and potential disrupting businesses. Typical computer vandalism involves the creation of malicious programs designed to perform harmful tasks such as erasing hard drive data or extracting login credentials. Computer vandalism differs from viruses, which attach themselves to existing programs. Malicious software These are internet-based software or programs that are used to disrupt a network. The software is used to gain access to a system to steal sensitive information or data, or causing damage to software present in the system. Fraud calls or emails. You must have heard a lot about this kind and you may have also received such a fraud call. It is called phishing, also known as voice phishing. In this type of crime, criminal contacts you through fake messages, call or email in which he declares himself to be an employee of a bank 
and he has called related to your bank accounts or cards. He asks for personal details like ATM card information, OTP, password, and etc. Or asks to click on the link sent by himself. If you mistakenly trust them and give them the details, you will lose the money kept in your account. Keep in mind that no information is ever asked from any bank that is sensitive and never share any information related to your account on the internet or to an unknown person. Fake News Sharing in Social Media Some cyber criminals simply work on social networking sites to spread social, religious, and political rumors. Impressed by this, common people inadvertently share the link or post shared by the unknown people in their social media. This causes the user to face legal actions. Keep in mind that sharing any illegal link or post on social media also comes under the category of cybercrime. So avoid these things and do not do any work on social media under the pretext of someone which may ruin your whole life. And lastly, online illegal selling or what we call dark web. In this crime, a criminal sells illegal weapons, drugs, smuggled goods or personal information to the person on an illegal online shopping platform and the transaction is also done via cryptocurrency. It promotes terrorism and black marketing. For example, such as the dark web, this is content from the world wide web that exists on dark nets. Networks but request a specific software, configuration, or authorization to access. Everything illegal is transacted on this web search. Now, you must be thinking if it is illegal, then very few people would be using it. Then you are wrong. There are millions of users all over the world and the number is increasing daily. Tackling Cybercrime the best way to go about is by using the solutions provided by cross-domain solutions. This allows organizations to use a unified system comprising of software and hardware that authenticates both manual and automatic transfer and access to information when it takes place with, between different security classification levels. This allows seamless sharing and access of information within a specific security classification but cannot be intercepted by or advertently revealed to the user who is not part of the security classification. This helps to keep the network and the system using the network safe. Here are some guides to prevent you from being a victim of cybercrime. Use strong passwords. Maintain different password and username combinations for each account and resist the temptation to write them down. Weak passwords can be easily cracked using certain attacking methods like brute force attack, rainbow table attack, and etc. The following precautions can be taken to avoid your passwords for getting hacked. Using keyboard patterns for passwords, for example, QWERTYUI. Using easy combinations, for example, Gen 1990 and Feb 1990. Using default passwords, for example, Welcome 123 and John 123. And lastly, keeping the password the same as the username. Just for example, if the password is John and the username is John. Be social media savvy. Be sure to keep your social media networking profiles, either of your Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and etc., are set to private. Be sure to check your security settings. Be careful of what information you post online because once it is on the internet, it is there forever. Secure your mobile devices. Many people are not aware that their mobile devices are also vulnerable to malicious software, such as computer viruses and hackers. Be sure to download applications only from trusted sources. It is also crucial that you keep your operating system up to date. Be sure to install antivirus software and to use a secure lock screen as well. Otherwise, anyone can access all your personal information on your phone if you misplace it or even set it down for a few moments. 
Someone could even install malicious software that could track your every movement through your GPS. Protect your data. Protect your data by using encryption for your most sensitive files such as financial records and tax returns. A person can stay one step ahead of the hacker by getting information about the scams and hacking styles on the internet. Phishing is a famous hacking method, but a person can get rid of all the frauds by taking information from the internet about the latest phishing attacks. So stay safe and Tell your neighbors about these scams and make them aware. Protect your identity online. When it comes to protecting your identity online, it's better to be cautious than not to be cautious enough. It is critical that you be cautious when giving out personal IDs such as your name, address, phone number, and or financial information on the internet. Be certain to make sure websites are secure when making an online purchases and etc. This includes enabling your privacy settings when using or accessing social networking sites. Keep your computer current with the latest patches and updates. One of the best ways to keep attackers away from your computer is to apply patches and other software fixes when they become available. By regularly updating your computer, you block attackers from being able to take advantage of software flaws, which is the vulnerabilities that they could otherwise used to break into your system. And lastly, protect your computer with security software. Several types of security software are necessary for basic online security. Security software essentials include firewalls and antivirus programs. A firewall is usually your computer's first line of defense. It controls who and what can communicate with your computer online. You could think of a firewall as a sort of policeman that watches all the data attempting to flow in and out of your computer on the internet, allowing communications that it knows are safe and blocking bad traffic such as attacks from ever reaching your computer. So for our conclusion, today's hackers are spread across the world in large quantities. Many government and private agencies like FBI, CIA, state police are working to detect these hackers. But we also have some duty to protect ourselves and our private data from online frauds. Apart from this, people who are illiterate should be given information about debit cards, credit cards, the internet, and computer. We know it is a bit difficult to catch these hackers because they sit in one country and hack the computer from another country. So the best way to avoid these things is that we have to be careful and alert. And all IDs and passwords on the internet should always be unique and strong. Finally, I would like to say that if you use the internet properly and use the secure websites, then it, it will be difficult for hackers to hack your data. Thanks for watching.